Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. The Characterizing Exoplanets Satellite, or CHEOPS for short, has finally become operational. The European Space Agency made the announcement April 16, 2020, in conjunction with its partner on the scientific mission, Switzerland's University of Bern and University of Geneva. Switzerland is not a member of the European Union. The CHEOPS primary mission, as its name suggests, is the discovery of extrasolar system planets, planets orbiting stars other than the Sun, otherwise known as exoplanets. The closest confirmed exoplanet, named Proxima Centauri b, is orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system at about 4.2 light years distant. Why are CHEOPS and similar visible light spectrum space telescopes important? because exoplanet research is a critical link in the logical sequence of manned spaceflight. With SpaceX and NASA working on the colonization of the Moon and Mars, critical steps in the exploration of the solar system, the identification of tentatively human habitable planets outside the solar system pushes the frontier for humanity even farther than thought possible. This in turn provides impetus to solve the science and engineering problems of transiting the vast volumes of space found both inside and outside the Martian orbit. CHEOPS was launched by Ariana Space on a rocket from French Guiana on December 18, 2019. This launch was 20 months after a SpaceX Falcon 9 launched the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS for short, under a contract from NASA. TESS went operational on September 17, 2018 and has a similar mission to CHEOPS. TESS took over the U.S. Exoplanet Discovery mission performed by the Kepler satellite launched in 2009 by United Launch Alliance Delta II rocket and decommissioned a month after TESS went operational. The first circumstantial evidence of the existence of an exoplanet was by American astronomer Walter Adams in 1917 in the Van Mountain system, 14 light years from Earth. It took another 71 years for technology to advance enough for the first direct evidence of an exoplanet, this time detected in 1988 orbiting in the Gamma Cephei system, 44 light years from Earth. Finally, in 1992, exoplanets were confirmed to be orbiting a pulsar 2300 light years from the Sun. Discovering planets so far from the Earth was made possible by analyzing anomalies in the pulsar's pulsation period, a characteristic unique to this star type. Planetary discovery has exploded since then and has become a significant area of astronomical study for the U.S. and European scientific communities. As of May 1, 2020, there are 4,260 confirmed exoplanets in 3,149 star systems, with 696 of those systems confirmed to possess more than one planet. All the systems with confirmed planets are within our own Milky Way galaxy. The European Space Agency selected the CHEOPS mission design submitted by the University of Bern in 2012 after a general call for small mission ideas from European countries. Nine member countries stood to benefit from the mission, with Austria, Belgium, Hungary, Italy, Portugal, and Sweden joining the EU Big Three, France, Germany, and the UK. The ESA set the budget at 150 million euros, or about 200 million dollars, given that Ariana Space bills 165 million to 220 million euros per launch, which includes the 40 to 45 million dollars required to obtain the RKK Energia Soyuz rocket from Russia it would be necessary for CHEOPS to hitch a ride with some partners. To that end, the ESA reached an agreement with the Italian Space Agency and Alenia Spazio, which was launching the Cosmos SkyMed military civilian radar satellite. Further reducing costs was the participation in the launch of the ANGELS, U.S. Air Force, ISAT, U.S. Base AMRAD, and OPSAT, another European Space Agency project, satellites. Airbus, to no one's surprise, was selected to build the CHEOPS satellite itself. Airbus is as adept at spreading the butter around to ensure key constituent participation as Boeing is in the United States. The ESA is cagey about its contract award figures, 
that we at the BTM channel estimate that Airbus received $75 million to build the satellite, with Ariana Space being paid another $100 million and the remainder going to the ESA itself and the two Swiss universities to run mission control and scientific programming. In contrast, NASA set a budget of $287 million for the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. $75 million would be paid to Northrop Grumman, originally Orbital ATK, before Northrop's $9.2 billion purchase in 2017, for the satellite, with the other $125 million going to NASA for mission control and MIT's Lincoln Laboratory for the scientific programming. $87 million would go to SpaceX for the Falcon 9 launch. The Kepler satellite, the predecessor to TESS, cost $640 million in 2009, with $150 million being charged by the United Launch Alliance for its Delta II rocket, and the remainder going to Ball Aerospace, a division of the food packaging company Ball Corporation, to build the actual satellite, and the NASA Ames Research Center for mission control and scientific programming. The Kepler was a very large satellite, coming in at 2,291 pounds, while the tests weighed in at only 798 pounds. However, these sizes are not a cost differentiator with regard to the rocket, as the Falcon 9 has a 50,000 pound payload to low Earth orbit, and the Delta II had a 6,000 to 14,000 pound payload capacity to low Earth orbit. As of 2020, Ariana Space had no manned launch capability without its Russian launch partner Energia and the Soyuz lift vehicle. The company has expressed interest in developing this capability, but any such effort would require subsidy from the European Union and the European Space Agency, both of which have been content to allow NASA and Roscosmos to lead the way in manned space exploration. SpaceX was just certified for manned launch of its Dragon 2 capsule, which is currently slated to lift from the Kennedy Space Center on May 27, 2020, on a Falcon 9 rocket. The Dragon 2 Demo 2 is expected to deliver two astronauts to the International Space Station for a multi-month mission. SpaceX is also developing the Starship manned launch vehicle for manned moon and Mars missions, as well as general solar system transportation following successful establishment of manned bases. A modified variant of Starship has been contracted by NASA to deliver astronauts to the moon in 2024. Manned Mars missions are targeted to start no earlier than 2030. We consolidated the available Starship presentations in Short 2 and summarized SpaceX's Crew Dragon efforts in Short 7. The links to Short 2 and Short 7 can be found below. Proxima Centauri B is within Proxima Centauri's theoretical liquid water zone. This is a tantalizing target for would-be star explorers but reaching the exoplanet represents a stupendous challenge in manned exploration. Current theoretical spaceship technology would limit speeds to eight-tenths the speed of light, which is the relativistic barrier past which noticeable time dilation would occur for the crew. Even this tremendous speed would mean at least a 12-year mission time to travel 4.2 light-years out and back with a one-year stay at Proxima Centauri. SpaceX's Starship is strictly an intrasolar system design purposed for multi-month transits between planets and is not capable of an interstellar mission. The company has not publicly expressed an interest in interstellar capable vehicles, which is not particularly surprising given the current state of technology and the company's commercial purpose. Given the aforementioned limitations of current spacecraft design and general relativity, is manned exploration of exoplanets even possible? It seems until the relativistic limits are conquered, Proxima Centauri and every other star system remains out of reach. At least two theoretical faster than light drives had been proposed within the framework of general relativity, the Alcubierre drive and the Hawking drive, but both are highly conjectural with little practically demonstrated physics behind them. For now, we'll have to gaze afar at exoplanets with Cheops and Tess serving as our lenses on the galaxy. What do you think of Cheops, TESS, exoplanets, and SpaceX's manned mission goals? Is the solar system the relativistic frontier, or should it be a launching pad to the stars? Share with us by dropping a comment below. 
We hope you enjoyed this briefing on exoplanet scanning satellite development. If so, click that like button. Clicking the subscribe button and notification bell icon will also help you stay informed when new episodes are released. Links to previous space industry related episodes and our other content can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.